Hey, good morning there, Sweet Peas, Basic Prepper Mom Myra. So we know that there's just a lot going on, right? So the Colorado Supreme Court has said that Trump is disqualified from being on the ballot in Colorado due to the 14th Amendment, blah, blah, blah. Well, the funny thing is, is technically he's not disqualified because he's not been convicted of anything. So what basis are they using for their disqualification? I don't know. They, they've got their reasons, which to be honest, Colorado's kind of a lost state anymore. Um, I, I, and for those of you that live in Colorado and are not that way, I, I apologize. I don't mean to lump everybody together, but when we're talking state-wise, we kind of look at um, who's kind of a lost cause and who can maybe come back from it, so to speak. And I live in California. And I'm telling you right now, I don't know if we can ever come back from the crap that's gone on between the last governor and the current governor. I don't know if we are ever going to be in a situation where we can come back and um, be a better state just as, as a whole. So please don't think I'm picking on one particular state because if there's any state that is having a hard time and may not come back, may not recover, it's this one. Anyway, moving on. Um, having said that, I and, and the reason I said that about Colorado is I don't think he would win Colorado anyway, even if he was on the ballot. Um, there's just certain states that you know are completely blue and he wouldn't have had a chance. It is what it is. And to be quite honest, I don't know if he'd have a chance in California or not. Which brings me to my next thing. When we talk about being prepared, when we talk about preparedness, when we talk about stocking up, storing up, and doing what we can to provide for ourselves and our families, there's kind of this line of, well, you know, I really don't need to stock up because it's still available, and thinking that it might not be available down the line. And a lot of people aren't thinking, okay, this might not be available down the line. Here's my thought process. Currently we have, and we're gonna forget about everything that's going on overseas. We're gonna forget about all the stuff. I'm just gonna call it stuff because I, I'm kind of, there's so many players in the game right now overseas. I don't even know what's going on. Like, I don't know who's doing what, where, when, why, how, to who. So we're just gonna say, we're gonna, we're gonna leave all that over there. We're just gonna leave all that over there. We're gonna focus on here, right now. The here and now, right now. And part of that focusing on the here and now is the fact that there are so many illegals that are coming across the border in droves. Like, there are so many of them. They were estimating, well, this is um, uh, government numbers. This is not the actual number, please keep in mind that the actual number is gonna be way higher than the uh, government number that they give you because most of them are not being caught and accounted for, right? So they're saying that like 12,000, I'm just gonna round out, I'm just gonna estimate, like 12,000 um, illegals are coming across the border a day. Like per day, like yesterday, I think there were like 12,900 or something like that, or, or the day before or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, they have them, there's a video of them being housed in a, um, a, uh, it looks like a school auditorium. So like a school gym, um, and they're just packed in there. And then there's shots, of course, everybody's seen them at the border, on the other side of the border, everybody lining up, the trains going by with rows and rows and rows, line, line, line of illegals, and everyone has seen the video. There's no, there's no dis, uh, discounting the fact that they are coming over in droves. Well, here's the problem. We can only, sorry, I'm gonna turn this a little bit. Um, we can only take so much. We can only provide so much. There's only so much food that the United States has to go around. There's only so much first, there's only so many first responders. There's only so much medication. There's only so many spots in a hospital. There's so, so when you have an influx of 
and I think they were estimating, I don't know if this is so far or if this is what's estimated by the end of the year. I'm not sure. I need to look into that. But they're estimating three to five million illegals. I believe it's already have come across. That's what I'm, I'm thinking. Um, three to five million, sorry, my hair in my head. Um, three to five million illegals. Now, when you have that influx of people, obviously the first place they come to across the border, which is usually Texas, right? Sorry. Um, there's going to be this influx. So they've already said, the border towns have already said in Texas, hey, we cannot take anymore. Like the churches are full, the missions are full, the um, the, the homeless housing is full. They're, they're literally camped out on the streets in front of churches and just all down the street. We cannot handle the amount of people coming in. We don't have services to be able to handle it. So not only do they not have the services to help them financially or food wise, like with food stamps and things like that, but they don't have the manpower to deal with all of that. They don't have the manpower to deal with the um, medical issues and the, the fights, whatever's coming across. So first responders are being overwhelmed as well. When you have that influx of people coming in right here, they're eventually gonna spread out, right? Because you can't put three to five million people in this little area. So everyone is eventually spreading out. Now, a lot of these, I don't wanna say a lot of these, some of these people already have families here in the United States. So to, realistically, that's where they're gonna go, right? They're gonna to go to wherever their, their families are. But when they don't have families, they're still having to spread out and go somewhere. So what does that mean? Well, that means that they're coming to your town. That, come, that means that they're coming to your home. That means that they're coming to your area. Doesn't matter where you live. Doesn't matter how far out. Doesn't matter how rural your county is. They are coming there because you have to, you have to go somewhere. There's only so much real estate that you can take up before you have to go to somebody else's real estate, right? And the fact that, you know, they were shipping them to New York and Chicago and all kinds of places just to get them out of that area. Well, what happens when you've got, so three to five million, if we say three to five million so far, and it's estimated, they're just, they're just keep coming. What happens to our resources now here in the United States? Well, they get spread very, very thin. That means that resources are not available and hard to come by. That means that the resources that are meant for the people that are here legally, whether you were born here, whether you're a U.S. citizen born here, or whether you've gone through the um, naturalization process and you're, you were made a U.S. citizen, it doesn't matter. So for, uh, for the U.S. citizens that are currently here, those resources now become very scarce. Those resources become hard to find. And when you keep having this influx of people eventually something's going to break. Eventually something is going to happen, right? Well, you kind of couple that with the uh, couple, everybody coming in and the stress involved in that by not only the areas that they're in, but the areas that they could come to and people trying to prepare for, oh my gosh, they're, they're going to come my way. What do I do? What do I need to do? What resources do we have that were, you know, low on whatever the situation so you couple that with all of the unrest right now, especially with the 2024 election a few months away, if that's going to happen. And there's people that say that that might not happen. So you couple that with, <laughs> sorry, that was weird. My phone just automatically disconnected here. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Sorry. I apologize. Um, so you couple that with the um, unrest of the election and whoever gets voted in, I'm just gonna tell you right now, it doesn't matter at this point what side gets voted in and what side doesn't. Because I think either way, we're gonna see a separation of states. I believe that we're gonna have a possible civil war and maybe that possible civil war is what leads to the separation of states. I honestly think this country will be split into two countries, possibly three. Um, because I don't think that this is going to sound really bad. I don't think that we can live harmoniously, harmoniously, is that a word? Harmoniously, harmonious, harmoniously. Maybe that's it. Anyway, I don't think we can live happily with everyone that's currently here. 
Um, I believe that there, and, and, and that's very sad and that's very unfortunate, but I do believe that we are going to have a conflict here in the United States. Now, I do believe that we are also going to see something happen here in the U.S. that has to do with foreign countries. We have too many illegals coming in that are not from Mexico, by the way. We're not even talking Mexico nationals or Mexican nationals coming in or Me Mexicans coming in. We're talking other countries. We're talking China. We're talking um, refugees from Africa. We're talk There are so many young military age men from different countries that are coming across the border. I really believe that they are heading to sleeper cells. I believe that they are already heading, those people are already heading, those men are already heading to cells that have been started here. Not to actually start new cells, but I think that they are here to reinforce the cells that are here in the United States. I know, wait, let me put my little hat on. There we go, my little tinfoil hat there. So what does that mean for us as a preparedness type person? Well, first of all, it means that you definitely need to continue to store up and stock up um, because even though right now it might seem okay and you might look on the shelf and go, you know what, things are fine, it's great. I think come springtime, we're gonna see a lot of shortages. I think come springtime, we're gonna see a lot of stuff go on. Um, I'm looking at like, I, like April, May, I don't even think March is gonna hit just yet. I think April, May, we're gonna start seeing some stuff go on. So. You guys need to really be aware of what's going on. You need to keep your head on a swivel and, and really look at everything that's going on around you and make sure that you are doing what you can to protect yourself and your family from whatever situation. But like I said, I don't care, to be quite honest, what's going on overseas. I do th I, I do understand that what's going on over there can affect us. It can affect us in you know supply issues and, and oil prices and things like that. I, I understand that, I get that. But what I'm most concerned about is what could happen here in the United States because this affects me immediately. That over there will affect me eventually. This will affect me immediately. So that's what we kind of need to focus on is what's going on here in the U.S. and really pay attention. I, I really could care less what's going on overseas right now because that doesn't affect me right now. But if something were to happen here in the U.S., that affects me and my family right now in this moment. So... Keep your head on a swivel and make sure that you're paying attention, but don't get overwhelmed with it. Continue to stock up and store up. Once again, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out. I hope you guys have a wonderful, amazing day, and we'll talk to you soon.